Saul was a humble man, a humble young man, from a small family in the small tribe of Benjamin among the people of Israel. Saul's family, of course, farmed and had many animals, but one day their donkeys ran off over the hills and they didn't come back. Those donkeys went missing. Saul, along with a helper, had the job of finding those donkeys. Now let me tell you a little bit more about Saul. Because Saul had some very special traits. Saul was very handsome, and he was very tall. Head and shoulders above all of the people around him in Israel. I wonder, what special things people notice about you? Are you tall? Are you fast? I wonder if people notice how smart you are, your sense of humor. Maybe it's your creativity or your strength. I wonder what special talents God has put inside of you that maybe you haven't even recognized yet. Well, Saul, his physical attributes were clear. People thought he looked like a king. They really did. But Saul had a job to go find the donkeys. And he and his servant climbed the hills and they looked all around. And no matter where they looked, they could not find those donkeys. They crossed through the hills of Ephraim and down, back down into the valley. Remember our old friend Samuel? Let's check in with him. Samuel was in a town in this area that he visited often because they had there a place of worship. This was before Jerusalem had a temple. And there were shrines and holy places scattered around. And Samuel, as the spiritual leader of God's people, would travel around and help people to offer sacrifices to God. And so Samuel was in this little town He was at the altar and he helped people to make sacrifices. He helped people to remember that God loved them and that God was with them. That's a good thing to remember, isn't it? So on this same day that Saul and his servant were looking all over for the donkeys. God spoke to Samuel. And God told Samuel that the next day he would bring the man who was to be the king of Israel. Now after time had passed, Saul became tired of looking for the donkeys. And Saul said to his friend, Let's go home. The donkeys are probably back. And now my father is worried about us. But the servant said to Saul, There is a prophet in this town. Let's go and see if the prophet can tell us what has happened to the donkeys. So they started towards the town. 
And they saw two women walking out of the town. And so the men asked the women, Is the prophet here? Is the prophet in town? And the women said, Oh, yes. He's just up ahead of you. And so Saul and his servant came into the town. And Samuel greeted them. And Samuel invited them to come to a meal. Because when Samuel laid eyes on Saul, God spoke in his ear and said, This is the man I told you about yesterday. Samuel, this man Saul is the one who you are to make the king of Israel. Of course, Saul had a different question for Samuel. Saul wanted to ask his question, but before he could even ask, Samuel said, Saul, don't worry about those donkeys. Those donkeys are already back home. Your father has them. Now your father is wondering where you are. But Saul, I've got more important things to tell you because all of Israel is going to want to know something about you. So Samuel invited Saul and his servant to a special meal. And Saul was invited to sit at the head of the table. And many others came and were present. As they ate from food that had been sacrificed on the altar there to God. As I think about Saul coming to Samuel, I wonder, is there anything you would like to ask a prophet about today? Are there things you wish you knew about the future? I know there are things, questions I wish I could have answered. But Samuel invited Saul to stay overnight, and all the others left. And the next morning, the next morning, Samuel instructed Saul to have his friend leave. So the servant left. And Saul and Samuel were alone. Now Saul was anointed by Samuel. Samuel anointed him with oil, marking him and telling him that he would be the first king of God's people. Israel. I wonder, what special calling does God have for your life? I wonder what plans God has for me and for you. Samuel told Saul that God had great plans for his life. God knew the plans now. Samuel knew the plans, and Saul knew the plans. But it would be a while before all of the people knew. You'll have to join me next time to watch all of the other people find out about God's plan. Until then, I pray that God will continue to reveal His plans for you. And I pray that you will walk faithfully into those plans.